Hi, I'm Leslie Canarium, Reader Conversations Librarian at the Rogers Public Library. And here we are back at uh, Take It, Make It. And today we're going to be working on shrinking rings. This is a really super easy craft, which is nice uh, for getting back into the fall. Uh, it's something that you can do with your kids. I know that some of you have been taking these projects and doing them with your kids or grandkids, but do remember this one involves a hot oven, so you don't want to let kids do it unsupervised. Alrighty, what you're going to get in your kit is a piece of uh, shrink plastic. When I was a kid, they called these shrinky dinks, but that's the brand name. Now there's all sorts of uh, less expensive generic ones you can use. And you're going to get three different colored pencils because I'm doing the demonstration. I get all the colors. And what you'll need on your own is a piece of paper, scissors, uh, a pen or a pencil to do some marking with. And knowing me, of course, you're going to want nail polish, clear nail polish and something to protect your hands when you're handling the hot plastic. That's, this is just an ordinary glove, winter glove, and measuring tape. And the trickiest part of thing that you'll need is you'll need something round that's the size of the ring you want, final ring you want. The easiest way to find something is to take one of your ordinary rings and just you know, find something that fits inside it. This happens to be a wine cork. You could also use the handle of a hairbrush, a wooden dowel, look around your house, you're gonna have something that, that's the right size of your fingers. First thing you need to do is measure the finger you're working with. If you happen to have flexible measuring tape like I do here, you can just wrap it around and See where it hits, and it's saying oh, six centimeters, okay. Or if you don't have that and you just have a ruler, just take a piece of paper, let's see, strip of paper, wrap it around your finger. Let's do it the other way. And take your handy pen, mark where it hits. You can see how useless I am with my left hand. And measure that. And dun 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 dun. dun. And we're getting, oddly enough, just about six centimeters. Now, as nice as that is, unfortunately, it'll tell you on the package that this shrinks up to 20% of its size, which means you should realize that that is going to divide in five. Unfortunately, I found with experimenting, that's not really true. It can shrink anywhere up between a fifth and a third. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean it will shrink a quarter. It means it will shrink somewhere between a fifth or a third, and you really don't have a lot of control about it over that. But don't worry about it because, I mean, if it's too short, a ring where the ends don't meet is fine. It's perfectly wearable. If it's too long, uh, like this one uh, turned out to be, well, you can either clip the ends or, gosh, you can just wear it on a different finger and it still all works out. So now you got to do math. So I said uh, six centimeters. I'm going to, generally speaking, a woman who has small fingers is going to want 14, about a little more than 14, 14 and a half centimeters long strip. Because I have fat fingers, I'm going to go for a 15 centimeter strip. And yes, I'm saying centimeters because honestly, it's a lot simpler and uh, they're, they're smaller, but you can always use inches if you like. Measure that out. Dun, dun, dun. 
And as far as width goes, yeah, somewhere between an inch and two centimeters is a, is a nice, is a nice uh, width for the strip you're working with. You should be able to make a bunch of them with this uh, project, so with, with the plastic you're given. So if the first one doesn't turn out great, well, hey, you got another one to try again. So that's the size I'm working with. At this point, you're gonna wanna think something about what kind of a pattern do I want? You can do a design. Um, you can do, I did one with flowers. I did one with wings. Uh, you don't want anything too elaborate or fancy because it's gonna shrink and it's not gonna be terribly visible. But if you're not feeling very arty, that's fine. You can do just put in different colored polka dots or as I'm gonna do different color stripes and it'll look great. So then you take your shrink plastic. You'll see it has one kind of frosted dull side and one shiny side. You want to be working on the frosted side, the, dull, the rougher side, that's important. So take your piece of plastic. But I could just cut along that side. Uh, this is the one I already did. You won't be doing this because you won't have one cut out yet. That's why we did all that silly measuring. One thing you do want to do after you cut it out that I didn't do on this one and I wish I had, you want to make sure you're edges are even and smooth, and you want to round these uh, short sides, because when it shrinks, it gets sharp, and that doesn't make for a very comfortable ring at all. So just give that kind of a nice little oval ring. And I said for this one, I was uh, just going to make a very simple design. I'm going to do stripes, kind of a rainbow pattern of stripes. So Okay, like I said, super simple. You can do a super simple design and it'll turn out pretty. You can do one in just black and white, just totally black, and it looks very dramatic, uh, kind of gothy. You can do one that's, um, you know, a little bit more elaborate than this. You can use as many colors as you like. You can use permanent uh, markers if you'd rather, if you have those at home but I recommend using the pencil, colored pencils instead because the colors get really intense when it shrinks. And if you start with markers and you make them even more intense, you're gonna get something really super dramatic. So next step is we need to go into the kitchen. At this point, you wanna heat up your shrinking plastic. You can use a toaster oven if you have one because that's nice because you can uh, watch through the glass and watch as it curls up and uh, flattens out again. Or if you have a heat gun, uh, like a serious crafter would, uh, you can use that. But I just used my kitchen oven and it was fine. You want to set it at 325 to 335 um, Ovens run a little bit different. I, I've been, but I've been doing it at about 3:30, and they came out fine. You're going to put it in the um, oven for three minutes. If you're watching it, you'll see it curl up and then flatten out. Once it flattens out, you give it 30 seconds more and then take it out. And then once you take it out, and I'm telling you ahead of time because we got to do this fast, you got about five seconds to Take your ring mold, put on your heat resistant glove 
and you're just going to shape it around that mold and hold it till it cools. It's not going to be burning hot, but you don't want to do that with your bare fingers. If it sticks to each other in the oven and doesn't unstick, that happened once, that's fine. You can just pry it apart. Um, if you mess up in the molding part, you can stick it back in the oven and try again. Um, so it's, it's pretty forgiving. So this is the one that I prepared ahead of time. Uh, let's go ahead and see how this one turns out. Okay, so we go in here using our hot pad carefully, take it out. You can see how much it shrank. I've got my glove on so I won't burn myself. I'm going to pick up the little hot strip of plastic and wrap it around. And I'm going to hold it until it cools down. That's going to be about 30 seconds. So you can see how I've wrapped it around. It, the ends don't quite meet, but that's okay because they're good. that's going to be on the inside of the ring. You see, even though I rounded them, you can see how sharp they are once they've shrunk. So you can imagine how sharp those would have been if I hadn't made them nice and round before I shrank them. Take it off your mold. And there you can see I have a nice, pretty flower patterned ring fitting to my finger. Once it's thoroughly cool, you knew I was gonna say this, you might want to coat it with clear nail polish just to protect the pattern. Do not use colored or sparkly nail polish. I tried that. It did not work well. And that's it. Mm -hmm.